Yankees. Yes, he did. More Yankee history as Garrett Cole now passes Ron Guidry for the most strikeouts in a single season in Yankee history. 249 passing number 49, Ron Guidry. Yo, what's up, everybody, and welcome to the newest edition of the Bronx Machachos podcast. We host Mark, and tonight we got the entire family tonight together. We got Dave. What's going on, everybody? Happy almost Christmas. We got Alex. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. We got Danny. <laughs> With a smile. Year was good, everybody. And, of course, we got our brother from another mother, mother Scott Sanders, a.k.a. the Sandman. What's up, my brother? Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy Holidays. It's that time of the year. It says, right, that is the time of the year. All right, everybody, you guys know the drill by now. Rate, subscribe, review, like, hit us up, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Odyssey, Amazon. You know the place. You know the drill. You know where to go. Um, if you guys are watching right now live on YouTube, hit us up. On uh, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, let us know what's good. Hit us up in the chat, let us know everything that's, that you want to know. Talk about uh, also for everyone who does not know by now, we do have our own website, which is www.bronxmachachos.com. Go there, and check out our merch store, get all your fresh gear, get yourself like, a, like we have on our website right now, get yourself stuff from Amazon so or Amazon store, from, uh, fanatics, memorabilia, and articles that we are always publishing. So, so let's get into it. Let's get into the hot stove portion of the of the program for tonight. Um, we got a twofer tonight. Got a twofer. We, we got the first half is, is the is the hot stove. That's why our boy the Sandman is on with us. So let's get right into it. Let's get down and dirty. There's only one thing to talk about, and that is Yamamoto and where he's going to wind up. So before we got on to tonight, uh, I was listening to what uh, uh, Andy Martino from SNY News was talking about, and this is exact. This is from him that he said that the pre, that the two teams basically in the pole position are the Yankees and the Dodgers. Those two are the front runners. Those two are, have the best shots to getting him. Um, with that said, he did say that Steve Cohen and the Mets are making a substantial and a serious offer to Yamamoto sometime in the next, I would say b- before Friday, most likely tomorrow, maybe Thursday, the latest. And supposedly uh, the end of this week is when you'll find out who, when Yamamoto is signing or not. So with that said, I'm going to bring it around the table. Uh, how does this news affect everybody? What is everyone's thoughts? What is everyone's feelings on this all? Uh, take it Go for it. Alex, I'll throw it to you first. I'll take it away, brother. I mean, I think this is a Merry Christmas because um, I don't know. I don't know if the Dodgers are going to still be in it right now because they got Tyler Glasgow. So like, like Glasgow. So like, I don't really know. I, I don't, I, I think it's more like, um, Merry Christmas for us Yankee fans, in my opinion, like the way it's going to go. That's just my thought. Oh, quick and easy on that one, brother. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm making it nice and easy. I'm not going to try to. Hey, listen, on you, it. We're, yeah, we're talking. You're talking glass now. He did have he he got traded to he got traded. He signed his he extension. Got, I mean, exactly. Exactly. So, uh, but I mean, you know, we so we've spoken about everyone's spoken about in the past. I mean, Otani, he's he's made that deal so that. He that they can keep adding on, keep adding on, can't keep adding on. So the fact of the matter is that he that the the Dodgers are still players right now until they're not players. So let me throw this. Let's throw this down to the Sandman. What does he think about this? Yeah, I, I, I really feel pretty good for you guys. I, I think um, I think the Yankees are definitely the front runner. I think uh, you know the Mets are obviously going to over try to overpay. Um, he's got to you know Cohen's got to make a move. He. You know, last year he made how many moves he made last year, and literally they all backfired on him. Uh, so, I, I, obviously, I think the Dodgers are still in play mainly because Otani's there. Obviously, he's 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 got a relationship with Yamamoto, obviously. Um, but 
I, I do. St I still think that the, the Dodgers probably would like to add him, but I just don't know if uh, I just I, I have a feeling that Yamamoto is going to probably want to be his own superstar. He's going to be number two, always behind Otani. Actually, might be, be be number three. Put in Mookie Betts. Um, obviously, you know when he goes to New York, he's going to be behind Judge. He's going to be behind. You know, he's. I'm not saying he, but he will be the new centerpiece. He will be the new star in town. He's going to get all the attention. Um, but um, I, I know his agent's holding out. I know he's holding out because they're waiting for that for that Mets offer to, you know, mm -hmm. probably pay 10, 15, 20 percent over what the market may bear. You know, I read somewhere today nine years, 300 million in that range. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, the Mets go 10 for 350, you know, something in that range. Possibly, you know, 35, 30, 35 million for 10 years. They might even give him, he dudes 25. So they, the Mets might even go 12 years, you know, 12 years, 425 or 450. Who knows, you know, so it'd be interesting. But I still think my gut, like I said a week ago, I, my gut's he's going to be a Yankee. I got you on that. I mean, I, still, I think he is. I mean, you know, the numbers out there, I mean, the original reporting of all the numbers have been crazy. I mean, 300, 300 is the bare minimum I think he's going to get. Uh, Dave, what's your thoughts on this? Um, yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot too, um, especially after John Morosi's comment saying today that he wants to play for a team with a big stage. That's not in Queens. Sorry, Mets fans. Hate to break it to you. You are not the big act in town. It's the Yankees. Um, there was another, another thought that crossed my mind too. You know, yes, does he have a relationship with Otani, but he also has a relationship with Masahiro Tanaka, who he had been seen with a lot last year, given the fact that they play in like the same league in Japan. I know, I don't know exactly know how the Japanese league is structured, but I believe there's like an East and West division, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And I believe they're, they played in the same division and they were spotted at the all Japanese All Star game together. He's been linked very closely to Tanaka. And I don't, think that Yamamoto wants to play in Shohei Otani's shadow. There's just no way. I, I get there's been reports out there saying he wants to play on a team that's got other, other Japanese players. If he's as big as a superstar as they say he is, there's no way he wants to play in Yoshida's shadow or Otani's shadow or Seiya Suzuki's shadow or even a legendary shadow like Ichiro Suzuki even though Seattle's not in play here, I'm just saying it for purpose of conversation. I do believe he wants to be his own star. I could easily see the Yankees giving him between 370 and 380 for nine years. Um, I do see that happening. I don't think Hal Steinbrenner is going to be outbid. Do I think Hal's going to go 400 million plus for him? No, I don't think that's going to happen. But I don't think there's any amount of money that Steve Cohen can throw at this to put him in Mets blue and orange. That's just my gut feeling. With the Yankees don't have a conversation with him and ask him, him and his agent, hey, who do you want as your translator? If this wasn't gonna go in the Yankees' favor, I, it may just be me spitballing at this point, but I believe he ends up in the Bronx. Mm -hmm. I can see that. You're right. I mean, like that's definitely you have a very good valid point on that one. Dave, like it's there's no yeah. reason. Uh, there's no reason. What about you, D Danny? I I've been 50 50 on this. Me and my boy Juan, we go back and forth. To, we talk, he's a Mets fan, he's my best friend since high school. And we talk about Yamamoto literally every day. And every time he texts me, I'm worried that he's going to tell me something that Yamamoto is going to go somewhere that I missed the news. So um, I, I have, I'm trying my best to not think about it because I said this weeks ago, how much I want him in pinstripes. So like to avoid the the anxiety and the, the craziness that goes into this decision, this decision that he's making, I'm trying not to think about it. However, um, based on everything that, you know, everything that everybody's been saying, the biggest stage, we've seen him in multiple pictures wearing Yankee hats. Like this guy, he, he wants to be a Yankee. Right now, it's a matter of how Steinbrenner stepping up to the plate and giving him a, a fair market value uh, deal, um, and hopefully ends up in pinstripes. 
Um, I, I want him bad, man. I, and I said this, like I said, uh, a, a while back. So, um, and I've been watching him like at the WBC, uh, the start against Australia, the start against Mexico, just to, you know, just to kind of wet my palate with, with him. And it, you know, that fastball plays up. He, you know, in the WBC, he really didn't have to throw the cutter, but the splitter and the curveball uh, definitely played. And get him in the lab with Matt Blake. The cutter has been a pitch that the Yankees, as a system, as a program, have been implementing. So if he already has that in his repertoire, if we can find ways to make that better, I mean, I. I feel like for him, pitching wise, that would be um, an attractive thing to to uh, explore. Yeah, and to Danny's point too, I was looking at his stats <clears throat> last night, and the most strikeouts he's had in Japan is two hundred and five. Granted, he's pitching in a league where people know how to hit him, but with him being the new guy on the block coming to the major leagues, this is probably going to be bold to say, but I think he could possibly strike out. 400 people in the season with just the way his stuff plays. It is nasty. No one's ever seen a pitcher like, I mean, um, who is the American player? Uh, Brinson Lewis, I believe, was talking about him on an interview this week saying, like, he can't hit him. Like, Lewis Brinson. In- Lewis Brinson, thank you. I got the names reversed, but thank you, Danny. But um, yet, with the way Yamamoto's stuff plays and his arm angle and the finesse and the way it dips and dives, I. I could very easily see him striking out 400 people in the major leagues his first season in the league. I don't know how everybody else thinks, but that's my take. That's a bold. That's a bold take. I, I mean, think that's a that's a I mean, wild, yeah. wild bold. <laughs> yeah. Hey man, I love to live. I love to live, to live on the edge, bro. I love to live on the edge. Nobody, nobody wild. really does 300 strikeouts. No one, no one does 300 strikeouts in a. <laughs> Garrett Cole like, does. Like, Justin Verlander does. Yeah, but that was, um, was like, 2019. Yeah, I was going to say, it was the last time they did those. Attack, and... <laughs> not, re- not in the past four, a few years that no one's been doing that. And we're talking about hey, that's guy my that's hot take. Win. That is my <laughs> hot take. I, 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 I mean, I'm not. I'm, this, he would have to pitch like 250. Years. I'm. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm not this. against. I'm not against Dave's. Dave's actually hot take because y'all be replay real. this he, in mid he has, when he's halfway there. Not only that though, Yamamoto has like. One of the best cu- um, yeah, curves after out there. He has one of the best curves out there. So I think he could. Dave might not be on the on a bad path, but like you, we're all like, okay, he, to get his like cutter be- better and everything like that. But if his curve is already out there right now, and they're gonna and then they work on giving adding another pitch to him and all that kind of stuff and make that pitch as well, he'll, he'll have he'll have a he'll have the pitches to actually go the way that Dave is talking. So I'm I'm leaning towards him if he can be if he becomes a Yankee. I could see what Dave's saying happens. All right, but I got, I got, I got to, I got to put question to post. What are you guys smoking? Hold, on, hold on, hold on. Before, before we go down that road, I got to. Drew Estate cigars. I got to. I got to talk about that. that, 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 that. I got a question to post to everyone. Hold on. So, with the numbers that are being thrown out there, and this is for everyone, go around the board, go around the horn on this. Mm-hmm. With three hundred million, three three seventy five, you're almost close to four hundred. Mm-hmm. What? How do you feel about him being? And his AAV being bigger than than uh than Garrett Cole's AAV. I'll go Scott. You go first on that one. How do you, yeah? How how do you think I mean, and how could that affect the clubhouse too? The bottom line is Garrett Cole wants to win the World Series. You know, um, he needs a Yamamoto next to him. Uh, you know, so you know, guys guys' egos can get big, but at the end of the day, a, a World Series ring. Will put put people's egos in check very quick, right? Um, so I mean, it's will it kind of look back and say, you know, Kerry Costa, oh man, I, I'm not the highest paid guy on the team anymore. That's just called timing, man. You know, um, you know, if, if it's called timing, it's it's what's the what is the market bear? It's just so many things that line up, you know. And, and at the end of the day, Gary Cole signed the deal. He he signed right, and um, and I was he four years in now is that three or four years in that range um you know if gary cole would have an opt-out and he'd be on the market this year he'd get more money yamamoto but he's locked in that's why these guys okay i mean you lock in for two three hundred million dollars so it doesn't really matter after that it doesn't right 
but so th that's why you really have to check your ego at the door. And I would hope that Gary Cole would be like, hey, bring him on. It, he makes more money than me. He helps us win a World Series. It doesn't, it, 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 then it's all, it's, it's irrelevant, you know? So, but I, I think he'll be fine. Garrett Cole also has an opt out after the 2024 season, which I don't see him enacting. And two, Garrett Cole's what, 32, 33 years old now? Yamamoto is 25. Yeah. Oh, he's 31. Excuse me. 31. Yeah. Uh, 31. Yeah. Oh, Yamamoto is 25. Hey, Dave, that opt out that you're talking about, there's yeah. a caveat to the opt out. Okay. So, so the, enlighten me. Okay. So, so the Yankee, so this, I think this is the first time in, with the opt outs that ever was put together where, Garrett Cole can opt out of that deal, and the Yankees can say no, and they tack on the tenth year at another thirty-six million dollars. So the total, his total contract could actually become a ten-year, three hundred sixty million dollar contract. Okay. So, so, so at the end of it, like let's say Yamamoto does get, does get three seventy, he's opting out. Just putting. The no, no, like, like, just, just saying that. Okay, he could, he, he does it that way, so that way he gets to three sixty, so that way he's up. Okay, he, he's just ten million below. Yeah. I still, I mean, I, I know the numbers out there. I, nine for 300 is 333 million a year. You know what I mean? I just, they, I know the guy's good, but that's still a lot of money for a guy that's, you know what I mean? I, I know his stuff's there. I, I know, I mean, I've seen him. I mean, I've seen him in the W, the, you know, the World Base Baseball Classic, and it's pretty impressive, but that's still a lot of money, man, to give somebody that's never stepped, stepped you know, stepped on a major league mound. But I know his stuff's going to play. And Dave, I don't, I think 300 is a, is a, 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 I think he can strike out 300, 400 would be, might be tough, but you can mark mine. He's got, to, if he throws 200 innings, he's got a chance to strike out 300 guys. Listen, Scott, if it happens, if he strikes out 400, you can buy me dinner in That's New right. Orleans. I'll come to Louisiana. Right. You can buy me dinner That's and deal. drinks and That's we'll right. call like it, it even. Yeah. I, if, if he th <laughs> strikes out 400, I promise you I'll have you throwing up on Bourbon Street. How about that? There you go. The, that. <laughs> Uh, it'll be a really nice Done. steak you're going to throw up, too. So it's going to be like double <laughs> All right. So what we're talking about this, if it's reversed. Don't forget to make sure he has a, hand, a couple of hand grenades. On, yeah. on, you know, so the hurricanes. Get the hurricane. Make sure he's going to be thrown up everywhere. So if he doesn't <laughs> no strike out 400. Two. So if he doesn't strike out 400, you, Cam, and the wife can come to St. Augustine, and I'll take you all to downtown St. Augustine, and we'll have a dinner on me. That's How's right. that? Yeah. That, that's a bet. That's a fair bet, yeah. Shake. There we go. I feel like um, you're losing out actually on that one, Sam. Sam, because like you know, it's it's St. Augustine. St. Augustine like, is a nice place. Yeah, it's I think not so, Miami, dude. It's still so classic. Uh, yeah, you're you're hyping it up I way too so much. Good. I would rather go to New Orleans than St. Augustine <laughs> for a meal. Oh so, Scott, let me ask you this: If you were the GM of the New York Yankees, what would Scott? If you were the GM of the Yankees, say you were in Brian Cashman's shoes, what kind of a contract would you be offering him? I would I would try to stay I would try to stay around thirty million a year is what I would shoot for right because mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure in Japan he was probably six years into his country most of those guys in Japan at eighteen they start they, they put him right to big leagues right yeah so he was probably six years in he was probably if I had to guess I don't know I had to guess he was probably making ten to twelve million dollars a year there you know so uh, I I would shoot for thirty a year. But obviously, I would probably go to thirty-five a year. But I would I don't think I would touch forty. I mean, name me another name me another pitcher that's this this worth forty million dollars in baseball. There's not one, you know. I mean, I don't even think Otani's worth forty million dollars pitching. To be honest, you know, I, I mean, I, I, guys, no, no, he's, he's not playing. he's not at all, not no. one bit. But no, I, I did, but I did hear I did hear that Jim Bowden has been talking about that a lot of teams are going to try to give him more years. Close to, close. To, to, yeah, to cut down the AAV. Yeah, that's 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 the only thing they can do. And I, I'll be honest. I, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if they're gonna try to piggyback off Otani and maybe do some type of deferred money. But um, you know, that seems to be the way of the future. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But they've been doing deferred money for the longest time. Yeah, but I mean, no, all right. So not, side not that, note, not that amount. Not, yeah, that well, amount. Side, not that amount. So a side note on that. Like I was thinking about this deal, and I don't want. I, I'm not trying to get off topic too far, but I was thinking like he'll only be 40 years old in 2034. What if he doesn't retire when that 68 million kicks in? What if he wants to play at least 41, 42, 43, if he can still swing a bat? The Dodgers are paying this man 68 million a year. Yeah. Like, mm, yeah. Uh, they're betting on this man retiring in, in 2034 at 40 years old yeah. when that 68 mil kicks in. I mean, I could see, though. I could see that he does say it till then. He retires a Dodger and then. 
they'll be paying him money to play in Japan so he could re- he could finish it off in Japan and, and do like one or two seasons a- a- in Japan maybe and and finish up like go like a, a, a coming home tour type thing. Could I be. Can go, I can see him getting le- taking less money, go to like a like a small. Well, less. Well, we're talking about him trying to change his lifestyle at that point too, because he loves Southern California. So maybe he takes like another, you know, takes like another two million, you know, another two years, two million per year deal with them. Mm-hmm. So just to, just to, just to stay there. So then, in actuality, he then gets, you know, for the final two years of his of his baseball career, he gets seventy million dollars for the final two years. Yeah, that's crazy. What a lot of yeah. money. Oh of no, money. it's true. It's it's that's tons it's and tons money. and tons of money right there. Money that what? your era only dreamed of, Scott. Yeah, exactly. That, that was our whole team budget. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I believe it. Tani, I believe Tani's it. already a lot of team budgets right now as well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, the, so- the, the funny thing is, John Morris bought the Padres in 1993 for 250 million dollars. That's it. Yeah. Two hundred fifty million from the McDonald's from the Crocs. That's half of Aaron Judge's contract. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, back in the day, they'd been like, "Hey," because that was a joke years ago when the, the stuff started going up, and the guy, one of the owners, said, "Hey, how about if I just give you the the, the franchise and you run it?" You know, I mean, to one of the players because he was, you know, wanted he wanted one hundred fifty million dollars. Right. That's crazy. And then we ended up about a video days. <laughs> 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 so we got other we got other teams that are doing that are trying to get into the in, into free agency or at least they're the ones truly really, really making making the winners the hot stove happen and that's the kansas city royals dave got a whole list letting us know what the kansas city royals have been doing and give it and he's going to give us his take on why he thinks that they're doing what they're doing dave take it away bro yeah, uh, the why is not exactly that clear, but man, the Kansas City Royals have definitely been the sleeper this offseason. Um, they're not really making your big sexy moves like you would expect teams to be doing this year, but they're bringing in some talent. So they signed Ma- Michael Waka to a two year, $32 million contract. They signed Hunter Renfro, who is a really great outfielder. Man, I would have not have minded the Yankees getting him at the trade deadline from LA from the Angels. Um, to go play left field for the remainder of the year. He just signed a two-year, $13 million contract with Kansas City. And then uh, Seth Lugo signs a three-year, $45 million contract with Kansas City. Um, I like what Casey is doing. They're bringing in some big veterans to, uh, you know, help their, their young their young studs like Brady Singer. I've been really high on for a while. And, uh, you know, Lugo has been around for a while. Michael Waka has been around for a while. He's pitched in the World Series. So th- those two dudes, in my opinion, are really going to help the Kansas City pitching staff uh, grow and get better. Um, the why, I don't know. I mean, maybe these guys just want to go play baseball this year and weren't getting any play anywhere else. I can't really put my finger on it, but they've definitely flown under the radar this off season. And I found this up the other day. So it's been, it's interesting. Um, interesting to see how it plays out this year for sure. Um, I've been to Kauffman stadium. It's a beautiful stadium. Um, the fans there are passionate, even though when they're in the basement, which is interesting to see. I mean, we got pissed off at an 82 and 80 season. This team's got one world series in the last 35, 40 years, whatever the hell it's been, you know, between 19, 85 and 2015 so 30 years in between championships but they're really they're a really passionate fan base i'm really excited for them um going forward this year so we'll just see how it plays out yeah one thing one thing about the you know i'll, I'll tell uh, you why the, the royals are going for it. go ahead you know, go ahead Rowan. And, and it's yeah uh the AL Central's AL Central sucks. Like that that division is wide open. We know. Open. We know. So You've known that for a long the time. Royals and you can get some veteran pitching in. Um, go do it. Yeah, I, I think you're gonna resign Grinky too. I saw Grinky wants to play again. I'm sure he's gonna if go back. And um, but I, I, the the Royals, um, you know, they had a really good farm system. And then they brought some kids up, and they're they're, clo- they're they're getting closer. 
obviously their division is not that that great. So I think they figured worst case they'll take a they'll take a swing at some of these older veteran guys. Obviously, if they hit and they're out of it, flip them at the at the you know at the, at the trade deadline, get get something get some prospects for them. Low, you know, exactly. probably yeah, you know, you're not you're not throwing around 15, 20, 30 million per guy, you know, and both both those guys have you know have upside, you know, and and honestly, sometimes it takes to go to a place like Kansas City, you know, where veteran guys can relax and obviously they all want to win, right? But it's not the, it's not a playoff type of atmosphere win. So you can kind of you can kind of get out there, you can still work hard, you can still win baseball games, you know, put up numbers uh, without without a lot of pressure on you. And um, and you know, next thing you know, you generate you actually get a nice three, four, five million dollar, you know, five year contract for you know, 25, 30, 40 million bucks. And I think that's what those guys are shooting for. Um, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to this whole decision, I I mean, like, yeah, it's gonna happen. I think the I think the Kansas City Royals just have a deeper roster and a deeper they have more depth than we believe. And it's like their team is it going to be a deeper team, and like they, Danny says, the AL Central sucks. It yeah. sucks. We all know it sucks. And it's like, if you have the chance to go for it now, go for it now. See what happens. See where your death could take you. And if it could take you that by trade deadline, you're you're going to be a contender. Keep on keep on trucking. If it seems that you're going to not be a contender. Sell away. That's not going to hurt you. At the end of the day, you're going to be good to go one way or the other. You're going to be okay. That's how. I and George, that. George and that is their president of baseball operations too. And the Tigers just lost uh, Erod. He went to Arizona, so he's gone. The Guardians, they got a new manager, and they brought back Austin Hedges as their catcher. So they're not really doing anything. The Twins haven't really made any noise. So uh, George Brett's probably looking at this like. None of these do. The White Sox haven't done anything. They're still listening to offers for Dylan Cease at this point. So George Brett's probably looking at this like, well, screw it. If none of y'all are going to do anything, let me make some moves and make my team competitive, and I'll see you in April. So Might as well also make the team competitive. Like, like, let's be real. Might as well make the whole team competitive anyway. Like, mm -hmm. like they had the Kansas City Chiefs. The city has the Chiefs. Okay? If they could get the Royals Which doing good across well. the street. They're playing exactly. the same. They're if, exactly. in the same parking lot. <laughs> it's kind of like how Philly is. Like they have everything right there as well. But like if they yep. could, if they could legitimately get the Royals to do good, it's gonna help the city out, and it, it, it would make the city look like if they if they make if even if they make it to the playoffs, it would be like okay, we are contender a contender city when it comes to sports at least. Instead of looking at like we only got football to look forward to every year. But I mean, we're still talking about the we're still talking about the AL Central, and AL Central is yeah, garbage. It's not. Um, it is. So I mean, anybody can, yeah, imagine, imagine, anybody can anybody can win that. But Mark, Mark, exactly. Yeah, but imagine. But we're talking. Yeah, but we're talking about the Kansas City Royals. We're... Yes, yes, we are. But like, if you live in Kansas City and you're waking up like two months into the season and your team is first place, second place in the division, you're gonna be like more prone to actually going to the games and seeing the game and spending your hard earned money on the team compared to two months into it. And you're in last place. You're not going to want to spend the money. None of us would. No, you're right about that. But I, I still have a hard time thinking that Kansas city Royals are going, they're going to be in a, a first place team. I don't, I don't think they're going to overtake the twins. I, I you know, the, the white Sox, they're, they're in a re they're, they're doing a rebuild. They're going to be breaking all that down. And you know, one of the guys, and, you know, sw switching gears, one of the guys that is, uh, shoot, who just who just got re who was released in the offseason was Tim Anderson, and that's an interest. That's an interesting thing that Tim An about Tim Anderson because he was a he has been a, a big name in baseball for a while. Has been mm -hmm. has been a shortstop. He's out of he's out of work. Where do you think a good spot for a good landing spot for him is? Hey, I'm gonna throw that down to you first. Where do you, where do you think Tim Anderson's got a good landing spot? Tim Anderson. <sighs> they were talking about LA, um, the Angels. I don't think that's a necessarily a good fit, um, roster wise. But him with Ryan Washington, I think, will be a great thing for Tim Anderson. Just getting him under his tutelage and 
let's say he has a great year in LA and he kind of sets himself up for uh, a big payday on the, on this next off season, but um, they just got rid of David Fletcher. So uh, they do have a hole over at second. Uh, they, uh, he, I'm not sure if he's a, if, if he's a shortstop. He's willing more. to go second. He is willing to go second base. He is willing to go second uh, base. For one year would be a great spot. Yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's what I'm thinking about him as the second baseman mostly. Mm -hmm. And I think LA angels will be a, a great spot for him. I, I definitely see him moving to second base. Um, just, Number one, obviously, I know where he's not going to end up is either in boxing or UFC. He's not going to end up in either of those. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a glass jaw, so he, he's no. definitely going to have to move to second base before he tries UFC or or the have you know or, or lightweight boxing. But um, I think there's a few. I, I, I can see him being a guy that almost probably plays out almost all the way to spring training, and if not, possibly even play even ain't not signing with anybody until. Midway through spring training, you know, kind of like some of the some of the guys in the NFL do, like, you know, they're mm -hmm. veterans, they're mm -hmm. good players, but they don't want to get on a team and be, you know, a backup second baseman, a backup shortstop, a utility player. So maybe maybe they maybe he waits, you know, say he does somebody get hurt in spring training. Is you know, is somebody, you know, thinking that the next hot shot's gonna be their shortstop at second baseman. They kind of fizzle out and the next, you know, because he's gonna want to go somewhere and play because I'm gonna tell you right now. Tim Anderson, if he's not playing on a team, he will wreck the clubhouse. So whoever does sign him, they better have a spot for him on the field because if not, he will wreck that clubhouse. I, I can mm -hmm. promise you that. I totally, totally agree with you on that one, Sam, because, like, let's be real. I'm not a Tim Anderson fan. Like, in my opinion, the best place for him to go is either – Miners or Japan. That's my opinion because the man has a bad attitude and he needs to work on that attitude because in my own honest opinion, he's a cancer to any clubhouse that he, he that they put him in. I don't care what team it is. You could be the best team. You could be the worst team. He's not going to help you. He's not going to help the young stars because the, the young stars are going to get it. They're going to learn how to get a chip on their shoulders yep. and they're going to become straight up D bags. Let's just be real on that one. Yep. Okay. And, and then they're gonna learn bad. They're gonna learn bad techniques when they're growing up, and then they're gonna act like they're the same way as him. And that's not gonna work out for at all for a young team. Goes on a veteran team, he's just gonna make the whole core have a fight with each other. So, like I say, in my opinion, either go back to the minors and get some get some sort of attitude adjustment type of thing and learn. And hey, if it doesn't work out, you're cut type of yeah. type of deal. Like, okay, maybe a team does need a a, a, a shortstop or a second baseman. I don't know, whatever, but. Got to put him into the minors at least to get him to know where his head's going before you put him into the major clubhouse. And if that doesn't happen, sayonara. Have fun. Yeah. Have fun in, in the in the in the land of the rising sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Alex, you need to stop reading my mind and taking <laughs> my thoughts out of my head because um, you pretty much took everything that I was going to say. Um, hey, that's why I said it before you did this time. That way, <laughs> yeah, you don't beat I, me to it. <laughs> I, I, I know. You've been doing this a lot lately. I don't like it. Get out of my head. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, Tim Anderson needs, in my opinion, to eat some humble pie. And um, he needs to be willing to move positions. You know, he's going into his age 31 season. Last year, he had 18 doubles, two triples, one home run, 25 RBIs, 13 stolen bases. Had a batting average of 245, OBP of 286, 296 slug, and a 582 OPS. His war was negative two. That's negative 2.0 uh, for those of you that are listening. Um, I don't think he's really getting that big of a free agent deal. When I think of teams that need a second baseman, I know you guys are going to give me crap for this, but it's only because I used to live in New England, but the Boston Red Sox could definitely use his services. Um, anybody that's the, the Mets come to mind, but they're somewhat of a rebuild on the infield. I don't know who there's, I think Luis Guillorme was their second baseman this past season. So the Mets could use some second base help. Um, I think of teams like Seattle, I think of teams like, um, who else? Maybe Minnesota. Um, you know, your up and coming fringe teams, I think he could go to. I don't see him going to the minor leagues at 30 years old. He's going to tell somebody I, to get I, Ben. Um, right. So, 
I could see him getting a minor league deal with an invite to spring training, possibly, if this keeps dragging out. But who knows at this point what's going to happen with them. Well, you know that while I was reading today that the San Francisco Giants need a shortstop. And as much as we're talking about, you guys are talking about moving him off of, of yeah, uh, Crawford's getting old for sure. Crawford's not there anymore. He's free agent. So oh, yeah, they, need a, they need a shortstop and, and, uh, and, uh, and Marco Luciano is not ready to take the, to take the reins yet. So it's not a bad stop gap. Cause I kept on hearing that they're looking at trading people. I mean, if, on a Yankee perspective, I would tell them I'd, I'd give them Oswald Peraza. Give me Joey Bart and give me like a pitcher and give me a, a young pitcher back as well. And they can have Peraza over there. And, but you stay I think away right now, from my fan club member. Listen, we know you still got you the presidency. Stay away on that from one. my boy. <laughs> but, listen, if you get to, if you get some playing time, man, that's all. The, that's what you should be worried about getting getting him playing time. That since you're the president of that fan club, but on a pers- on a different perspective, why not make why not sign a Tim Anderson for one year, five million plus incentives, something something along those lines. Let him let him reestablish his market. You give Marco Luciano a little bit of time. I think it's a win. I think no matter what, it's a win win because you got the Giants are not in a in a win now situation. Reason why is because he is still a clubhouse cancer, and but if, you do not want to destroy the clubhouse. That's my opinion. But you, but you, but you, but if it's a one year thing, you can still get rid of him at any point. It does that. It's you're, not. It, we're not. It's not a long. T- what I'm saying is not. You're long right. T- you're right. But, you're right. But you need. I, but you I, need I, something right now. And if you need, if that's something right now, you can do. Why not take? Why not take the risk? Because he knows he's got to be on his best behavior as well. It's a twofold thing. Like he's got to be on his best behavior because you're and not you giving really him. Think he, he's had his time to be have his best behavior for so many seasons, and they always tell him have be on his best behavior, and he always does some sort of boneheaded move, no matter what his career. It's gonna happen again. Like it's like you're 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 basically basically hoping on fate to happen, and that's what's gonna happen with him. But how many how many how many times have players come around and gotten them, that one year deal to to get themselves yeah. back on track and continued on? Scott knows right. it. Scott knows right. Hold on. The rest hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Let's throw this around. Scott, you go first. Yeah, sure. yeah. I mean, so obviously, somebody's going to give him a one year deal, and it's going to probably probably be low salary, high incentives. Um, the tricky thing with him, you know, is, you know, when, when he puts the numbers up, he put up for a lot of years, people put up with his crap. Um, so now, if he's smart, he, 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 he's not, he shouldn't walk around. With his head all swole because his numbers don't reflect that. So, you know, it could be time for him to, to eat some humble pie. Obviously, he got knocked out, and and that should have that should open. I mean, that should open up his a lot of things should open up his eyes. And sometimes it takes you know uh, it takes years like he had, and to reflect because people I'm, people have probably been telling him for a long time, hey man, you're 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 a butthole. You you need to you know be better to the young kids. You need to be better to the city. You need to be better to your fans or whatever, everything, you know, and sometimes your numbers reflect it and they don't really care what anybody else thinks. But, you know, if he gets on in, in a right situation, obviously he, he would be a nice stop gap. I, I think his game is really diminished um, from even two years ago, especially five, three, four years ago. You know, I think his range, his arm is still, you know, okay, but it's not what it used to be. His bat is obviously half of what it used to be. I mean, I mean, because at one time he was a baller. You know, what I mean, he was he put up numbers that uh, you know that, that, that for a shortstop with head were mind boggling at times. But it's going to be interesting. I just like I said, I I still have my gut feel is I don't see. I mean, Ron Washington would be great. Ron Washington is he mentors guys, right? He's an infield guru. Um, so Angels make a lot of sense. Obviously, I think the Giants would make sense too as well. Um, I, but I don't think. He's any better than Crawford? I'd rather bring Crawford back. I mean, Crawford is is a is a glue is is the glue in the clubhouse. So I mean, if you're going to pay him, I would pay Crawford the same amount of money come back, and you're going to probably get similar numbers. Um, but so, Scott, to your point, um, looking at his stats in 2019, he played 123 games, batted 335, the highest of his career. Fast forward to the shortened season in 2020, played 49 out of 60 games, batted 322. 2021 played 123 games, batted 309. 2022 only played 79 games. I'm assuming that's due to injury, batted 301, and then dropped off the table in 123 games, 245. So, yeah. Yeah, and you know, you look back, and so was he hurt? 
and did he play hurt this year instead of not taking off? I mean, who knows? But you know, it's just if I'm the Giants, like I said, I'd much rather have Crawford back. And I, and I know he's not; he's only a smidgen of what he used to be as well. But he's at least the glue in the clubhouse for those guys. So, be interesting to see. I wouldn't be shocked if he goes to the Angels. I can I can see Washington, Ron Washington mentoring him and setting him hey. straight too, and setting him straight. Danny, what do you think? Ron Washington is the best bet. I think he's he'll be a great uh, mentor to him, and I think he'll set him on the right path. He's got a lot of personal stuff going on as well that he's got to get figured out. So just getting out of Chicago, putting him in this place where he's in a he's in a space where someone believes in him, he'll get the most out of Tim Anderson. Uh, he's not gonna. He, maybe he not. Maybe he won't hit 300 again. But you know he'll be an average bat. Um, he's not gonna get on base a bunch, but he'll make some contact and and provide solid defense at second, um, and and kind of go from there. Well, those are all those are all valid points. Uh, I think the Tim. I think that's uh, Tim Anderson's definitely the wait to be wait to see. But I definitely think. The, the rec, he's a reclamation project from the like, like you said one year put the, put the dollar amount there but a lot of incentives but let's switch gears a little bit uh take you know put the put put the fire out on the hot stove for for this week and since Christmas is right around the corner it's always a nice time to do what what we do here which is give a give ourselves a chance to give out what what our wish list is for the upcoming season. So I'm gonna go throw it over to Danny first. Danny, for, for you can go Yankees, you go baseball. What is your wish list? For, what is your wish? What is the one item on the wish list for you? Danny, Danny, hear me, brother. Who's on first? What's on second? <laughs> oh, for me. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be you. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't, I didn't hear what else was going on here. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, Yamamoto in a in a in a World Series championship uh, as well. Um, I, I just think that left-handed pitching and Yankee Stadium wins championships. So you. Even if we don't get Yamamoto, I will love a guy like Monty back into our rotation, a bounce back season from Carlos Rodon and and um, Nestor Cortez, and get those lefties going uh, because <clears throat> it equals championships usually. Uh, look at 2009 with CC and Andy and the way Andy anchored that rotation throughout an, our entire our our entire run. Um, you know, you had guys in there with like Jimmy Key and and um, uh, Kenny Rogers in 96, and then David Wells. So there's always been a stalwart left-handed pitching at the top of rotation for, for the Yankees, and I would love for um, for that to either be Rodon, if we get Monty back, or Nesto Cortez to kind of take that and, and for us to, to win a World Series championship this year and, and, and dominate. I got you. All right, Dave. What about you? What you? What's on your wish list? Man, I mean, I think if I wish for anything more other than Yamamoto, I think we're getting greedy. But <laughs> one thing I want, another one of these. It's been fifteen years almost since one of these mm -hmm. World Series ring. That'd be nice. Um, yeah, I mean, we got Soto, even though my. My boy, Mike King, a fellow Rhode Islander like myself, got traded in that deal. Hard to see him go, but got Soto, got Verdugo, even though I hate the Red Sox with a passion. Um, but still, Alex Verdugo is a left-handed bat, and I'm really excited to see what he does in Yankee Stadium this year. Um, if he can work out the hustle issues that he got benched for in Boston this past season. Um but man, I, I mean, other than Yamamoto, I think we got everything we wanted this year for Christmas. I remember you know, when we first started this out, we were had a whole laundry list of stuff mm -hmm. we wanted and never got. 
Um, so if we don't get Yamamoto, I'd love to see Montgomery back. I mean, I think there was a reason why he rocked number 47 in pinstripes for a reason, you know, because 46 was already taken. So, I mean, I could be reading between the lines a little bit, but I'd love to see Montgomery. Hell, I'd even take a chance on Blake Snell at this point. Just get you a solid number three starter um, or number two, rather, behind Cole. Because I don't think Rodon, when healthy, is is good. Do I think he's number two? No. I think he's more like a number three uh, when healthy. And if they do get Yamamoto, it just takes that pressure off of Carlos Rodon. So, and it takes the pressure off the rest of the staff, I think. Not to say that Cole feels pressure. I mean, I know he does. He's the ace, but he, he wears it well. But I think in the in the lane of Rodon and Cortez and Schmidt, I think he would take a lot of that pressure off those last three guys in the rotation. Um, like I said, the only thing I want this year is a World Series championship, and that's about it. I mean, we got the free agents we needed, and I don't really – you can always add more, but we already have our starting lineup figured out. I don't think there's ever been a time in recent history where we already know who one through nine is going to be before they even get the spring training. Um, so that's where I'm at with that. Maybe bring back Wandy. We'll bring back Wandy because you know Wandy's our boy. Um, but other than that, other than bringing back Wandy this this off season, I think it's a wrap, in my opinion. No, that's I I I like the way your your wish list and Danny's wish list is. And I'm going to actually have a different wish wish list. My wish list is that in the regular season, I need coaching and I need upper management to not make bonehead moves. That's what we need. Okay. We need that if if there's if there's a trade that we could do that could actually help the damn team, do the damn trade. If there's a trade to do to get rid of something that we're gonna that's gonna help us, do it. Like do whatever you need to do in the upper management wise that's going to actually help us in season wise okay and do what you got to do coaching wise so we're not doing boneheaded moves like i understand boom boom does what he has to do because his hands, hands are tied but let's open it up a little bit like let's let's fix up something there, there, there were problems that we had this past season that the coaching staff did have and they could fix on it Fix, fix those type of problems, especially in this upcoming season with all the weapons that we have coming to us. That is my wish list for the Yankees because ultimately if that works right, then we get the ring. That's how I look at it at least. How about you, Sandman? Well, obviously my my, my biggest wish list is Cameron stay healthy and make the big leagues, obviously. <laughs> um, we'll start with that. Uh, but for, for the Yankees, obviously – you know, obviously, I, I really think Yamamoto's a huge key. Um, you know, offensively, I think, like Dave said, I mean, y- y'all have to feel as good as you felt in a while with, with the lineup they got. Um, obviously, you know, bullpen, you know, th- three, four, five, hit, uh, you know, in the rotation is all going to be key. I think they do have, you know, I, I think if you, t- if you can get Yamamoto, it can push everybody back one slot in the rotation. You can even take that fifth starter and put him in the bullpen. You know, it just it just makes everything so much stronger. Um, you know, at the bottom line, Cole's gonna still be you know you know starting pit the, the, the ace. Uh, Yamamoto could be you know a one, right? And um, then then Rondon can slide down and you know be three or four, and it's just. But obviously, I'm hoping also wishing that Brad Ausmus brings a little stability to that to that dugout. You know, hopefully uh, he can help, you know, Boone and uh, use some of his knowledge to, to you know, to, to maybe help win, you know, five, six, eight, not ten games, you know, more than they, more than they would without him. So that's my that's my wishes. So, Scott, I got a question for you. We've been friends for a while. I've never asked you this, but take me back to a young Scott Sanders. One, who was your team growing up as a kid? I know you grew up in Louisiana, so I'm guessing Cardinals. Am I yeah. right? Yeah, Cardinals were my team. And I believe now I did like Kansas City. I like the Cardinals and Kansas City, my two favorite teams. And then I did watch the Braves a bunch because TBS. Um, but right. I, I was, I mean, I, I rooted for the Braves when they played other teams. But believe it or not, I did like the Yankees and I did like the Dodgers. It was weird. I know, I know it's kind of weird, but <laughs> even when the Dodgers would play the Yankees a bunch, you know. I'm 54, so I mean, I saw all, I saw Reggie Jackson and Dusty Baker, and I saw I me, mean, I saw all those iconic series. I'll be honest, I used to, my mom would never catch on to it, but I, you know, we only had 
I know I'm old. I'm 54, right? You know, we You're only had old. We only Stop. had 13. We only had 13 channels on the TV, and you had to turn the knob like click, yeah. click, click. You know, what I always, I would always know, like, you know, that the Yankees were playing the they would Yankees would play the the Dodgers in the World Series at like three o'clock in the afternoon. You know, two thirty, three o'clock. So I'd always know and then I'd always call around eleven o'clock, like, Mama, I'm not feeling good, and I'd go home from school <laughs> just to watch the baseball game, you know what I mean? And uh, but yeah, no, that was a good old days. But I, I like the Dodgers, but but my main team was the Cardinals, Lou Brock, you know, was was like oh, man, I loved them. So, you know, I wasn't you're not old, old enough to remember Bob Gibson is what I was about to say, yeah. I didn't get to see Bob Gibson, but but Luke Brock, I used to put pillows down in my living room and act like I was stealing bases, running slides. You know what I mean? Good old days. But the Cardinals were my team for sure. So let me ask you this: So when um, when your manager told you to walk McGuire, when you like the first time you faced the Cardinals, was it like, oh my God, I can't pitch against this team? They were my childhood team. Like, what was that feeling like when you had to pitch against the Cardinals for the first time as a major league player? I was actually fired up. Believe it or not, I always wanted really? to play. Cardinals and they never ever wanted me. I tell my, my agent every time, call the Cardinals. They were like, oh, we don't want him. I was like, Jesus, come on, right? And uh, but yeah, but the one cool thing it was um, 1996. We uh, we won the West and we played the Cardinals in, in the wild card game one. And I actually I pitched game one of the, of the playoffs. I'm not sure if I told you guys or not, but it was the biggest crowd ever in, in Bush Stadium history at the time, which is pretty cool. So. I was uh, pretty fired about that. So actually, I pitched with. I had the flu and I pitched like a dummy. But oh well. Michael Jordan played the finals with the flu. So yeah, but, I mean, but I'm not Michael you're in Jordan. good company. <laughs> I know, but you're in good company though. You play with the flu. I mean, you're I'm, a gangster. I'm more like, I'm more like Dennis Rodman. <laughs> hey, never mind. I'm not even gonna go there. Nope, not touching yeah, it. We'll stop there. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get in trouble. <laughs> We couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't, we couldn't end the episode without a good Scott Sanders story. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. We didn't, we didn't get more. Oh, we're not, we're not done yet, Dave. You, you, you yeah, right. you've been, you've been stepping no. over everybody there, bud. <laughs> no, I'm just saying we could not end the show. I'm not saying we're ending the show. I we know, but we, but we, yeah, we a good story. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Well, I'm saying all you, all oh, you, we gotta, we gotta wait till the end of that story, brother. We gotta wait no. till the perfect end. Window, all. I took it. I'm sorry. <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> I'll get back in my corner. My bad. did it. He did it with a good heart. We'll, we'll, he a good we'll, heart. We'll, we'll, we'll mute him now. <laughs> All right. So we'll put, Dave, we'll put Dave on mute for a while now. There he goes. <laughs> <laughs> the gremlin's gone back into his hole. <laughs> All right. So being the last one out in here, my wish list for the Yankees this year is twofold. It's to stop leaning in so heavily on the analytics. I don't care what Brian Cashman says. They all – they lean in heavily or too heavily on that. And I want the stat, I want health for that for the entire team because I'm, I'm tired of watching this team consistently go down with injuries left and right. I don't care about the judge injury that I know that's a, that was a freak injury, but every uh, there's tons of other injuries that always happens, always happens, always happens every single year. They stay healthy, they actually play real baseball, they actually have a, a consistent lineup at least one through six every every single day. With one one guy getting a day off here and there, but consistent lineups and healthy and a healthy team, then what Danny said, what Dave said, what Alex, you know, whatever was looking for that that next ring, that's that's I think it's a surefire thing. So, no, yeah, no, 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 Mark, you're totally right on that one because like it also comes down to the fact like in my wish list how I want management and everything like so that's that's definitely I, I it's like you you agree, I'm right on with you because like that was. That's how I see the biggest problem that they had with the Yankees. It wasn't anything clubhouse related. It was more everybody else. It's all the outside, everybody outside, outside factors coming in. Mm -hmm. That was the biggest problem, I thought. Yeah, I'm telling you, I told you all a couple weeks ago. I'm telling you, I, I think the key for the Yankees is going to be Stanton, Giancarlo, and, and LeMahieu. Those two dudes are healthy and can even put up three quarters of what. They they should put up with the what they what they got. Obviously, Soto's got to stay healthy. I'm not. I'm saying if everybody else stays healthy, you know the younger guys. Um, who is? It'd be pretty scary. It'd be a scary lineup, you know, especially in that ballpark. Seven, the potential one through seven yeah, is absolutely sick. disgusting sick. Yeah. on paper. Like, mm -hmm. good yeah. luck. 
Yo, they got they got a lot of things. I don't like and keep and me personally, I think keeping Volpe at the nine in the nine spot, making him like the false, the the false leadoff guy, it kind of reset it helps to reset that lineup at the bottom end. I just hope also now this year that they don't put the put the handcuffs on him and they actually just let him steal as many all the bases he wants to because they they stop. I think right after Judge got that one injured, they stopped him from stealing bases for months. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and that and like I hope they don't put John Carlos how some people have been prophesizing from like being the four or the five oh I hope he's like at a six because six or seven I I don't think he deserves to be that high up in the lineup next season. Well the one thing, especially Volpe, you you take him obviously yeah, he got thrown into that. Well, you oh. could disagree with Go it, but it. the numbers show that he's a slow he he was slow and, and, and he was dying at the end of the season. He doesn't deserve to be in the top of the lineup. I think John Carl Stanton at his listen, he had a really bad year. Like let's just it, No, really it is what it is with that. However, everything that we've seen with Thank you, Dave. I appreciate that. It was a very antiquated <laughs> response. But um what we've seen from John Carl Stanton since since he's been in pinstripes is that he's has the ability to bounce back. He's mentally strong. Now we just need his body to to kind of catch up with that. And I think John Carl is going to have a really good year. And I think hitting him four or five or six is probably going to be the best bet. But in that seven spot, I don't think he really, you know, should be there. But I wouldn't mind seeing him hit behind Glaber Torres. I wouldn't mind seeing Glaber Torres in that four hole. I wouldn't mind seeing him in the one hole either. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of room for play. And one through six for the Yankees. So uh and, and Scott, like you've been saying with DJ, I, I've been down on DJ the past couple of years because he's not the machine anymore. He no. he just hasn't shown to be that guy. Like he's been a 700, 750 OPS type of guy. If you could get around like 800 OPS for DJ LeMahieu, like wow, that would be great. You know, if, if we're talking same thing with Giancarlo, if you could get around that 800 OPS mark. This Yankees team is going to be so much better. Um, I, I did, I've been doing a lot of research lately, but um, based on last year, if if you look at some of the best offenses in baseball, like the Braves, they they had multiple guys play over 140 games. I think the only player that didn't play in the regular lineup that didn't play 140 games was Sean Murphy. He's a catcher. He caught 108 games. It's like you want these guys to be healthy. To Mark's point. They got to play every day. You got to see, we got to start seeing 140 games from one through six. It's just what it is. Um, And the Yankees are going to be a lot better if guys stay on the field. And Giancarlo is going to be a a big part of that. If he plays 140 games, Giancarlo is going to put, put up 40 to 50, uh, not 50, but he's going to put up 35 to 40 homers. Yeah, he could, he could, he could put up 140 games. The thing about uh, Jim, Jim, I, I, I know I mentioned this a few weeks ago, but the way I look at, it, I would, I would definitely, I would hit Soto leadoff, which I know is, people probably think I'm crazy, but he walks a ton. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, he, he his, his own base is st- stupid. I, I heard a stat the other day. You, one of you guys was looking up, but his on base percentage for his age is like I think there's only one or two other people in baseball history that's ever uh, is in, in is it's up there. But you know, obviously, LeMahieu would be a really good two-0 hitter. The tricky thing with Stanton is obviously when he's healthy, you know, he's probably a three or four hitter. When he's not healthy, he's probably a six or seven-0 hitter. Um, but you have to put somebody. You have to have somebody ahead of him that, that can possibly steal a base because if they can steal a base, he can't get all breaking balls. Because if there's nobody on base, you know, he's getting eight out of ten breaking balls. If they hang one, it goes 400 feet. If they if, it, if they hang none, he strikes out three times. But um, but you know he's um, if he can stay healthy, he can he can I can he can put up forty he can he can hit fifty he can hit thirty home runs on accident put it that way, you know so if you hit thirty on accident hits another twenty he can he can get to fifty if he plays 140, 150 games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see because you know what the great thing is last year Yankees only had three guys play over hundred games. Yeah. 
That's not yeah. that's 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 a that's that's a recipe recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, but like I said, we'll 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 see we'll we'll see Who's judge the labor and, and someone else and, and yeah, but we'll see the opening of the book on like on, on John Carlos and seeing how he works and how he's doing, especially when spring trading opens up. That's when we'll start seeing like seeing how things are going. Like once that happens, we'll know more like where he's gonna be ending up. Like that's where we're gonna be having our eyes opened up that we could see. Did he use this off season to get fundamentals and anything else that he needs to get in his head, whatever it is, to get back on par or was he still being what he was this past season? The other thing, too, with the big leagues Listen, is... I'm booking... Got, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm booking 35 to 40 homers for, for John Carlos Stanton. I'm, I'm saying 20. I'm right saying now. 25 or 30. 25 or 30. 30. 25 or 30. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, the bottom line, too, is if, if you... The more you win, the more guys play through injuries. You know, mm -hmm. Um you know, it seems like every year Giancarlo comes up with something, tweak mm -hmm. back, something that, you know, something always something. But you know, if your team if your team's in a race and they're and they're they're leading the division, guys will play through pain all the time. But as soon as you start falling off guys like him, you know, they, they'd rather rest than, than than wreck the rest of their season. So it's tricky. But yeah, if only three guys played over hundred games last year. That is not a good rest. That's a recipe for last place and exactly what happened. And it, it doesn't really matter how how you how you cut the pie up, it's still gonna be a, a turd pie. You know what I mean? With 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 only three guys playing over hundred games. Yep. All right. Before we end this show, I came across this one quote today and or just now and I figured this is a perfect perfect discussion to have or to end to end everything off. So uh, ben Verlander uh, is going viral right now for a, for one quote that he just that he just said, and the quote is for the Dodgers signing Otani. This is the most important signing in Dodgers history. I'm going to l leave that as a dead fish out there. Everyone, have at it. Go for any. Go for. What was it. the? What was it again? What was it? Again? Listen, that is the most idiot. That is the most idiotic. That is the most idiotic comments ever made. It is is ignorant it's ignorant it's absolutely ignorant get him like how do you say that you have jackie robinson he is the most important history he's the most important person in sports history period when it comes to baseball like for him to say show yo's honey just because of money is absolutely it's insulting it's insulting to people like me it's, it's insulting to majority of people who play this game absolutely ridiculous Absolutely ridiculous. It yeah, I agree. Um, give him the applause. Give him the applause. No, I, I agree. I, obviously, that, it, 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 my gears. Yeah, obviously he's. He, Hold on one second. Hold yeah. on. Give him the applause. <laughs> Go for it, Scott. Yeah, so obviously I agree. Um, you know. Otani is probably the biggest signing in Dodgers history in the past 20 years. Um, but obviously, he's no Jackie Robinson. You know, obviously, Otani is is one of a kind. Um, you know what I mean? But but the bottom line is Jackie Robinson changed the game of baseball. He changed a lot of a lot of things in the world. You know, you know. So, but you know, sometimes people make comments to to get follows and clicks and tweets and everything else and you know, you can read into the rest of it. You know, so uh, sometimes, sometimes bad, bad press is better than no press. They told us that a long time ago. You know, um, I take exception to this too. Um, mm, yeah, this uh, this strikes a nerve, man. Like, having been a baseball fan that's been to the Negro Leagues Museum. And has seen that history, has touched that history. Um, Jackie Robinson is the biggest signing in Dodgers history, in my opinion. And if you're really a baseball fan, like you should understand that. Like Scott said, this is the biggest signing for Dodgers in the last 20 years, sure, but all time, nah. 
Like, there was a man that had his number retired in all of baseball, and only Mariano Rivera was allowed to wear it. Yeah. Like, that should account for something. And if you haven't been to the Negro Leagues Museum in Kansas City, Missouri, I highly suggest you go because you'll be the, – the, the hair on the back of my neck stood up. I even cried at some points. Like, it will move you. And those guys were proud of that league, even though it came out of a really bad time in U.S. history. But it is a point in baseball that some have forgotten, but also a lot of people are championing it and honoring it. I got to meet some of those guys that played for the Kansas City Monarchs at that Royals and Dodgers game in uh, the summer of 2022. I met Pedro Sierra. I met um, a few of the other guys. And, yeah, just just go see it. But it, dumb, I'm going to say it straight up. Dumbass comments like this have no place in this league. <clears throat> and I don't blame Dave for getting pissed off. No. Yeah. No, he's, he's, he's totally right on that one because, yeah, that's BS on too many levels. Because let's be real. Um, Jackie and he's Justin is, Verlander's brother of all people. Yeah, 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 but yeah but that tells you everything. I, it does. It really Come does on, tell you bro. everything. It tells you everything you need to know. Just, because, like, just ask around the league about him. They'll tell you. I, I don't know. I'm him. Sorry, I don't, I don't know him, but I don't know many people who like him. So, but I don't know. I, it is, it is. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually lost for words that someone in this day and age would actually say something like that. Like that's messed up. Because, okay, so without Jackie. Oh, we we wouldn't have Reggie. Let's be real. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> okay, so like we we wouldn't have that. We we wouldn't have Daryl Strawberry. Oh, oh, he, he, half he, the he, league he, in the last like, like, years let's be real. wouldn't let's exist. Be, Tim, <laughs> we just talked about we just talked about for um, today. Tim Anderson wouldn't be in the league. Like, let's be real. Let's be real. Like, so this guy wants to okay. Crazy. Let's make baseball great again. Okay, yeah, you're right, Mister Mister Verlander. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that one pissed me off. Yeah, that was that's pretty bad. Yeah, I, uh, listen, I don't have to say anything else. I left it out there for everyone to say because it, it's self-explanatory. Uh, for, but for those saying I don't understand why it's being said, yeah, it's it's simple. It's click. It's a lot of clickbaits. It's a lot of just try just trying to get your name uh, out there. That kind of crap. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing to be said. I don't need to say it. It's all. It, Agree with everyone said. I don't, you know, I just I saw it. I figured we, you know, it's something that needs needed to be brought up and discussed. So I agree. Anyway, I so... need to fact check myself real quick before we hop off. Only three guys played over 135 games last year. We had six total play over 100. But only three played over 135 games, so that, that was my bad. That's okay. It's still not much, though. You know I mean you still that's that's still a very low number, six six over 100. You own three over 135. Terrible. Yeah, terrible. Trash. But that's what that's why your record indicated the way it did. Okay, Mark. So, well. That is going to do it for us tonight. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and tagging along with us. Again, Merry Christmas to everybody. Happy New Year. We're going to do another episode next week, the week of New Year's. I know we usually take the last two weeks in December off, but we're not going to do that this year. We're going to keep pressing because we love talking to y'all and we love what we do. And plus, we got Scott with us coming along for the ride uh, every week now until he doesn't feel like being here anymore, um, which won't be the case. So, uh, and I got to give a quick shout out to the two latest international tune-ins, which is the country of Belgium and India. Thank you to everyone listening in both of those countries who've made countries number 24 and 25 on our international list. So we thank you very much for tuning in every week. And we are going to keep talking about a certain subject until a solution is found. So. A good friend of my wife and I's, who was a bridesmaid in our wedding, her daughter suffers from PKD, which is polycystic kidney disorder. 
she needs a kidney transplant, has been in the ICU since she was born in August of this year. So her mom and dad are looking for a donor. If you would like more information on how to get tested to be a donor, the information will be listed in the show notes below on all your audio platforms and on YouTube as well. And the mom, Alexia Ariaza, is has given us permission to share her phone number if anyone would like to text or call her directly. The phone number is 401-688-6549. Again, 401-688-6549 to get in touch with her as well. And you can also follow their Facebook page, which will be listed in the show notes below as well. So this is the season of giving. So if you are able to be a donor or want to be tested to be a donor, we highly encourage you to do so and it helps the family in need so on that note we will see you again next week and for mark alex who has been eaten by his background apparently there he is um danny you sure and, have been getting eaten by your background too so relax relax, relax. not as bad as you you've been wholly eaten you, so, you might be right. You might be right. But you know what? Maybe my, my background is just having a little bit too much eggnog, okay? <laughs> so, and for the Sandman, we hope your holiday wishes come true of right. uh, Cameron making the Cubs 26-man roster. And if he ends up making his major league debut in Miami, we will be in attendance. So, oh, yeah. Chachos will be on scene. And for Danny, this is David Bronx with Chachos, and we are signing off. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs>